Hey, Notebook LM users. I'm sure you are using this awesome AI research tool to analyze YouTube videos. Now imagine unlocking hidden insights from those thousands of free YouTube comments and completely transforming your research. Whether you're a brand analyst tracking consumer sentiment, or a content creator tuning into your audience, or a market researcher spotting industry trends, this workflow is a total game changer. I'll show you how to seamlessly feed in hundreds of thousands of comments into Notebook LM alongside your video transcript and other sources. All for free unlike other workflows like Bardeen and Zapier. And the best part? You can get started in seconds without any coding. First, let's see how a brand analyst can use this workflow. Then, I'll show you how you can set up this workflow yourself in no time. And finally, I'll share multiple bonus tips through two more use cases you don't want to miss. Let's dive in. Imagine you are a brand analyst for Beats and you want to understand consumer sentiment around the new Power Beats Pro 2 earphones. Of course, you can listen to trustworthy YouTubers like MKBHD, but you'll miss out on your real customers' voices if you don't dive into those juicy comments. So, MKBHD's video and its 3,750 comments will be our first source. Also, to make the scenario more realistic, I'm including another YouTube video where Steven compares the Power Beats Pro 2 against Apple AirPods Pro 2, along with its comments. You're already familiar with the step where I add YouTube videos to Notebook LM. The new step here is that I have created two empty Google Docs to capture the corresponding comments. I'm going to open the one for MKBHD. Here, I have a new menu option set up as part of my workflow. It's called Scrape Comments. I simply click on this option, and it asks for the video ID from which to download the comments. I copy and paste the video ID, and boom. Google Docs starts downloading the comments right into this document. In fact, you can monitor the progress as it downloads. We'll get into the details of how this is set up and the inner workings of the script later, but just keep in mind that a few hundred comments download in a few seconds, while 4,000 comments can take up to a minute or so. Now the comments are all downloaded, and you can see a quick summary at the top, where I provide the video name, video link, total views, and total comment count. Note that YouTube's comment count includes both top-level comments and replies, but I've printed a split here for better visibility. Also, I've included a direct link to each comment in the document. This is going to be very handy and I'll show you why in a moment. I've done the same for another comparison video. Now that both Google Docs are ready, it's straightforward to add them to Notebook LM as additional sources, along with the YouTube videos. As you can see, Notebook LM now has full access to the video transcripts as well as all the comments, and you can add any other data sources specific to your brand research at this point. For this demo, I'll stick to these sources. Now let's get into the actual brand research for Beats in the context of the Power Beats Pro 2 release. My first question is, what overall sentiment do consumers express about Beats and the Power Beats Pro 2? I'm using this prompt to capture specific comments for each sentiment category. Boom. Now you have a quick and easy way to do sentiment analysis for your brands and product launches. Remember, we also added a link to each comment in our document. If you follow the references in the response, you'll see that the links are retained in the source. You can click the link to view the actual comment directly from Notebook LM. Now don't you think that's magic? Please comment below if you found that trick neat. While reporters and trusted YouTubers provide their honest opinions, it's invaluable to hear directly from consumers about what they like and dislike about the product. So, let's ask our next question. What are the top three things we should continue doing as a brand and top three things we should stop doing as a brand? Support with concrete comments as quotes. Here, Notebook LM consolidates viewer feedback along with references back to the original comments. We can continue doing a lot of brand and product research, but hope that walkthrough resonates with your scenarios. And that wraps up our brand analyst workflow demo. Now let's dive into how you can set up this entire system yourself. Imagine, as a content creator, you'd like to understand your audience's sentiment toward your content, what's working well, what isn't, and even get inspiration for future videos. For this use case, I'm taking one of my videos and adding its transcript directly to Notebook LM. Now, moving on to the comments. The first step is to create a new empty Google Doc, which we'll call My Video Comments. The main idea here is to use app scripts in Google Docs to download the comments directly into the doc. If you're new to this, think of it as similar to writing VBA code in Microsoft Office, or as having code run inside your Google Doc that connects with the YouTube API to fetch and write comments. 
To add custom code, go to Extensions, App Script. This will open a new tab for App Script development. Feel free to rename the project to something meaningful. In the main code area, you simply replace the default code with the code I've provided in my Google Doc. Please don't get intimidated if you don't have a technical background. I'm not a coder either, but I use ChatGPT to write this code based on my requirements. It had its challenges, but after some back and forth, we arrived at a solid working solution. While you don't need to understand every detail to use this workflow, I highly recommend having a high-level understanding of what's going on so you can adjust the code later with the help of ChatGPT or Claude if needed. To make it easier, I had ChatGPT add plenty of comments to the code so you can follow along. At a high level, here are the key parts. The onopen function adds a custom YouTube tools menu in your Google Doc. The scrape comments to doc function is the main code that downloads the comments and writes them to the doc. It takes the video ID as input, fetches video details, and downloads 100 comments at a time to avoid overwhelming the YouTube API. For every comment, it also queries any replies and constructs a direct link to each comment before writing it to the doc. The script batches updates 500 comments at a time to prevent failures. Now, an important step. The main API used here is YouTube Data API v3. This is a prerequisite for the code to work, so make sure you've enabled it in your project. Bottom line, if you want to treat this as a black box, all you need to do is copy and paste the code I provided, add the YouTube API, save, and close. Then, go back to your document and click Refresh. You'll see the YouTube Tools menu with the Scrape Comments option. When you run the code for the first time, you must authorize it to run on your behalf against your Google Docs and YouTube API. Please note that you should always be cautious when running any script from an external source. I'm providing this script for educational purposes only, and you assume full responsibility for its use and any side effects it may cause. Once you provide the video ID, the script will start downloading the comments into your doc. Beyond running code in the background, this creates a standard Google Doc that you can attach as a source in Notebook LM. As you can see, the document now contains all the comments, a summary of the video, and direct links to each comment. Now you can add this document as a source in Notebook LM. As a new content creator, my first question is, what are my audience sentiment based on the comments? And I'm using this prompt against my video transcript and all the comments. As you all know, this was my first video on Notebook LM, and sentiment has been 75% positive, 15% neutral, 10% negative, and some went uncategorized. In addition, Notebook LM is also providing summary of the sentiment along with the real comments. Next question I had was, what are few things I need to stop doing and few things I need start doing? Since I wasn't very clear on my prompt whether I'm asking for feedback on the video or the Notebook LM product, it's also bringing up the improvements my audience suggested to the product. Something to keep in mind while writing the prompt. Here is one thing it recommended me to continue doing, and it resonates well with me so far. That is providing innovative and practical tips to use Notebook LM, something I commit to do. My final question is, looking for potential new video opportunities based on my audience comments. I can immediately recognize this comment from Joshua, who recommended me to do a video on data curation in future. So I can actually click on the references and reach all the way to the comment to thank Joshua. As part of my next scenario, I wanted to show how a market researcher can analyze the smartphone market, consumer sentiment, and emerging trends. For this, I chose two really popular videos, one from MKBHD with 13,000 comments and another one from Mr. Who's the Boss with 11,000 comments. I wanted to test if our solution could handle that kind of load. While running the code, after about five to six minutes, they both eventually threw an error and I was only able to download around 6,500 comments for each. It's not bad in my opinion. After digging a little deeper, I discovered that Google Apps Script has an execution time limit of six minutes and that lines up well with my previous observation. So, it's important to keep that limit in mind for each video. This situation also prompted me to explore the API quota limits. Our app script uses a default project in Google Cloud, which gets a default quota of 10,000 units per day. When I looked into the quota calculator, I found that we use the comment threads API for top-level comments, and the comments list API for replies. Both of these cost only one unit per call, and since we call the API once per 100 comments, we should theoretically be able to pull up to 1 million comments per day, assuming each execution stays within the six-minute limit. 
This is plenty in my opinion. I'm not a Google developer or a GCP expert, so if you have any suggestions or insights, please share them in the comments. I've been experimenting with this workflow for a few weeks now and haven't seriously hit any limits yet. Before we wrap up, here are a couple of important tips. First, one of the main reasons I chose to use Google Docs in this workflow is that Notebook LM helps automatically sync whenever it detects changes in a document. That means anytime you update your document with new comments as the time goes, you can simply click this refresh button in Notebook LM and it will pull in the latest comments into your notebook. Isn't that cool? Second, there's an important limitation to be aware of when working with very large sources, not just with YouTube comments, but with any extensive data like large PDFs. In my Notebook LM introductory video, I explained that Notebook LM uses a technique called RAG, Retrieval Augmented Generation, to answer your questions. In simple terms, Notebook LM doesn't load all of your hundreds of documents into memory at once. Instead, it creates an index of your sources, and when you ask a question, it retrieves only a selective part of your data to send to the underlying LLM, like Gemini Flash, along with your query. It works really well for selective questions and answering. But, if you have a document containing tons of comments, and you ask Notebook LM to categorize each comment into positive, negative, or neutral sentiment, with counts and percentages, it might only consider a small handful of comments from the document when answering, due to that retrieval and augment step, not the entire source. Although I'm using the comments as an example, you will see this issue with any large source such as PDFs. I believe Notebook LM is keeping the context window smaller than the full capacity, which is up to 1 million tokens, that the underlying Gemini Flash 2.0 model supports. So quality and quantity of retrieval has direct impact on your final response. Usually it retrieves the right content to send to LLM, but if your prompt requires processing every row on your documents, you definitely need to think about it. There is limited memory in the context at this moment, though it keeps getting better. To test this theory, I uploaded the document with 3,743 comments directly to Gemini Flash 2.0 and asked the same question. It returned an exact count of the comments with sentiments, which demonstrates that it does have full access to the document whether through code or through a large context window. I will provide this feedback to the Notebook LM product team, but I wanted to make sure you are aware of this limitation so you know what to expect. If you are stuck around this far and interested in the script to download comments into your Google Doc, please take a moment to share your use case in the comment below. I'm happy to respond to your comment with a link to the script. There you have it, folks. If you found this workflow valuable, please like, share, and comment and consider subscribing for more AI insights.